Let's talk about Eternals. It's directed by Chloe Zhao, who just came off of a win for Best Picture for Nomadland last year. And I think it's an interesting Marvel movie to talk about because I think it's aiming for a different theme than you regularly get with a Marvel movie. I feel like a lot of the Marvel movies, you know, they're very formulaic at this point. They have what works and they keep doing what works because it makes sense to do that. Um, But I think that this movie tries to do that in a more adult way and it maybe doesn't always work. And let's talk about why. Uh, First things first. Uh, I think the script is a big problem with why it doesn't work. I think that the script can be very uh, uninteresting at times and very exposition heavy. Like there are whole scenes in this movie where it's just like long, long exposition scenes and they really are uninteresting and they make like these concepts and you know all this cool celestial stuff that's going on around the Eternals makes it really uninteresting when it's just like explained to you like it's basically just boring which sucks and also the script has very interesting dialogue at times but also some very weak dialogue where like you know a character will say a line and you'll just sort of chuckle to yourself and it will come maybe after they like did this really like sweeping speech about uh you know their philosophy and why they are how they are but then they'll, you know, it'll end with one line and it's just like, oh, that sort of ruined it. You know, you're trying to go for this more adult thing, but then you have to like rein it back for the Marvel formula, which sort of holds this movie back in a lot of ways. You know, I think that they were trying to maybe go for something a little bit more adult like Watchmen, but it keeps getting like held back by, you know, the Marvel formula, which is rough. And the script isn't the strongest, which it just makes the film feel long and boring which it is long it is two and a half hours long and it did not need to be two and a half hours long honestly this movie could be two hours and probably be totally fine but the fact that it has that extra 30 minutes it is rough to sit through it feels every bit of its length which is crazy because i've in the last week i've seen dune and the harder they fall which are both over two hours and neither of them felt long well at least as long as this film does like this film is tedious to get through which i think will make it go down in audience's opinion as time goes on because i don't think you're really going to whip this one out at a like marvel watch party and be like hey you want to watch the two hour slightly philosophical eternals movie or do you want to watch thor ragnarok again you know i i think that people will go for thor ragnarok because this movie is maybe one of the least fun Marvel movies to watch, which isn't a bad thing, right? Like, you can have interesting adult-themed entertainment that can hold your interest and be totally entertaining, but not in, like, a fun, like, Marvel way, but more in, like, an interesting philosophical way. But it doesn't ever reach that interesting philosophical. It's more like just sort of a very tedious Marvel movie to get through, which is rough. Also, the main villains are like the deviants. At least that's what the trailers lead you to believe. There is like some other villains in here that I won't spoil for you because this is a spoiler free review. But the deviants themselves are just totally uninteresting to me. They're just like CGI animals that look like the billion other CGI animals we got in the last like year. If you showed these characters on like Pandora, for Avatar or, you know, any other sci-fi world, I'd be like, oh, yeah, they fit. Because they're just generic creatures that are totally uninteresting. And they really drag the movie down every time they show up because you just have to have this big, dumb fight scene between them and the Eternals. And it's just... It's just uninteresting, you know? Especially when half the Eternals can't even, like, hurt the Deviants, which is weird. Like, you know, sometimes in the fight, you're like, well... This Eternal is just totally useless, so let Superman kill them all. Uh, Which is sort of weird, you know? Like, the Eternal's powers are the most uninteresting generic powers, and then you have the most uninteresting generic villains. And then they go together. But this movie does have some pros that I want to talk about. Because I think that the pros of this movie are very... I think they should be applauded, honestly. First off, this is the most, like, diverse superhero team to be made you know it has like a bunch of characters that aren't just like white dudes and tights so it's very like 
diverse and interesting and i think that that works in this movie's favor because these characters like kumal nanjiani he's great in this role and i as like this bollywood like star and i think that it's like fun and he is by far the most fun part of this movie because he uh, he's whenever he's on screen the comedy is there when he's not on screen everyone's just very you know stoic and uh uninteresting but uh, Gemma Chan is also in this movie, and I love her in this movie. I think she's really great. She's sort of like the leader of the team. You also have Angelina Jolie in here, uh, Brian Tyree Henry, like, and uh, Lauren Ridloff, who are all like great in this movie. And I think that like the diversity of this team like leads to the team being more interesting than maybe like if they were just you know generic superhero team. But um. So that's interesting, and I like that. Also, this movie is very well shot. You can tell that the director has won an Academy Award. Um, it's I think that the fight scenes look, you know, they're okay, and they're maybe not the best fight scenes in the entire Marvel universe. But like, I think that the landscape shots are shot very well, and I think that like the the technology the Eternals use is shot very well, and some of the set pieces are really pretty. And I think that that's a something that this movie has going for it. Also, you finally get to see a Celestial. That's, I think, the biggest, coolest thing that happens in this movie. I think that that's what the fans really enjoy about this movie, um, because you get to see a Celestial. That's cool and fun, and it hasn't been done in a Marvel movie yet, I think. I don't know, maybe they were in some post credit scene that I forgot about, but hey, this is the first movie appearance where they're like all up in your face and cool. And, you know, this movie does go a little bit more adult uh, for a Marvel film, which I think should be applauded. And it, you know, I think that, like, these are some good things about this movie. But I think recommending this movie is something I can't do. Because, I don't know, I just, in the theater, sitting there for two and a half hours, I was just bored out of my mind. Like, I love like the characters I enjoy I I think that like the characters are interesting and when they're on screen I'm interested in what they're doing but the script and the dialogue in the script are just they don't interest me and it it takes so long to watch this movie it's two and a half hours you feel it so it just feels like a very uninteresting Marvel movie because while I did say it tries to be adult, it never like it never goes far enough away from the Marvel formula where it becomes like genuinely like interesting, you know. So at the end of the day, it's not really something I can recommend. I like what Marvel did with it. I want them to continue, you know, making diverse superhero teams. I want them, I want to con have them continue, you know, maybe trying some more adult stuff in their movies. You know, this movie had like oh, a sex scene in it which you would be unimaginable in like an early 2008 Marvel movie. But you know, we have that now. We have these deep philosophical conversations on screen. I like that. But I think in execution, it doesn't go far enough. It gets held back by that formula. And also in execution, it's just really dull and boring and leads to me not recommending this, this uh, especially after Shang-Chi which I think was, uh, you know, it was a solid Marvel movie, but I think that it has one of the best villains of the franchise so far. And I think it was a very fun movie to watch in theaters. And then you get this immediately after, and it's a very, it's a drag to watch in theaters. And while it does some good things, I think it doesn't go far enough. So I can't end up recommending this movie. And I think that it's probably one of my least favorite Marvel movies to come out. Um, which is unfortunate because I there is stuff there's little bright lights in this movie where I'm like I love that I want more of that and it just it's just surrounded by this like black hole of unfun you know just boring dullness that for some reason is just this movie and that's my thoughts on the Eternals um, thank you for watching I want hey you know put your uh, comments in the comment section uh, i want to know what people thought of this movie because it is such a divisive movie i feel like um it's probably the most divisive marvel movie to come out that was like released by marvel at least like disney marvel you know like i'm sure like back in the day you know 
you got some really bad ones that probably the critics were like, yeah, this is garbage. And some fans were like, oh, no, but it's really great. But I think that this is like the first one that has been like that now. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day.